Hello, Michael here with another quick Redshift tutorial. Today I'm going to be having a look at light blockers and how you can create custom ones and um, how you can create ones uh, using alpha maps uh, to control the shape um, and pattern of your light blocker. This particular image I've got on the screen at the moment I actually used a couple of light blockers in combination with each other to create the shadows of the trees in the background. Um, being created by that light source there in the center um, and I overlaid some uh, a leaf light blocker as well so essentially combining them to create a foresty sort of light blocking effect and it sort of worked out quite effective with this one so I'm going to show you how to create those light blockers um, and how to so you can create your own custom alphas and uh, do it yourself all right so here we are in Maya with a fresh scene um, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a plane and just size it up so we can project a light onto it and then I'm going to turn off the grid uh, then we're just going to go to the redshift um, shelf and go to lights and go physical light and then just bring that up and point it down um, and I'll just do a quick render to show you what it looks like okay so pretty standard obviously it just acts as a light wood by default um, so one of the ways you can do this and this is the de default way but it's not the way I did in the image but I'll show you anyway um, is you can actually plug the map into the color uh, so if you go to the checkerboard next to your color option in your attribute editor for your light um, and then go to file and then open a file that's um, whichever uh, if it, it can be an alpha or it can actually just be regular color but um, I'm using an alpha map because um, I don't want it to be projecting color so I've just got this um, leafy uh, alpha that I created in Photoshop very quickly um, and if I just uh, re-render that you see it hasn't changed a whole lot um, and that's because the the image is like basically projected directly next to the light so it does create a rather diffused effect um, however an easier way to make this more obvious is that we change our light type to a spot you can see that it instantly projects that light uh, that alpha a lot quicker um, and then you can um, go down to your shadow settings um, and you can select shadow uh, softness effects gobo and then you can increase the softness and you have a little bit more uh, effect over the way that the alpha functions however I still think you're a little bit limited in this um, because it's just it's it's not like working with a physical light blocker and it can become become kind of hard for you to imagine um, how to work with this so I'm going to show you the way I did it in the uh, image that I showed at the beginning uh, which will give you some a little bit more versatility all right so back in our scene just with the light set back to its standard um, white color now um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create another polygon plane we're going to move it up and I'm just going to zoom in um, and then I'm going to decrease the poly count of it um, doesn't matter you don't have to have it this way or, or any specific way it can be zero it can be one polygon one by one um, I just like for the sake of visuals just to have it like that so I can see it in perspective a little bit easier um, and then we're going to apply a redshift shader to this so we'll go to the um, hyper shade editor and then uh, create a redshift material grab our polygon plane and assign that material to the viewport selection uh, so then in the hyper shade editor um, so we can select our redshift material so the first thing we're going to do is go to the color in the diffuse we're actually not going to be using this node um, I'm going to turn the weight off uh, or down to zero uh, but just for visualization in the uh, in the viewport it helps to have it plugged in so uh, let's open up that leaf blocker again that file um, and then we've got that in the center let's remap that so now we can plug our out color into our opacity color so um, the uh, the white areas are going to be um, opaque and the black areas are going to be invisible uh, to the to the camera and to the lights in a moment so before we do that though we're just going to turn the weight down of our diffuse and of our reflection because we don't want it to actually have any physical effects really in the scene apart from blocking light uh, so back in our scene now I'm actually going to turn texture on so we can see it and there it is uh, so if we make this a bit bigger and then we'll just run a render so you'll see that two things are happening um, it is in fact blocking the light you can see the the shadow of it 
um, on the bottom there, but you can also see the actual object itself. So we need to make this um, plane not visible to the camera. So we're going to select the plane and then in the attribute editor we're going to go to redshift and we're going to scroll down to visibility and then we're going to turn off primary visibility um, and that will pretty much work for most of your situations but if you've got a reflective surface um, in your scene you might want to scroll down to uh, reflection and refraction and make sure that it's not visible in reflections or visible in refractions um, and it depends on your scene as to whether or not you want to cast reflections and cast refractions as well. Um, I'll leave that one up to you though. So now we've got this very, very diffused uh, blocker happening. So to control how uh, this is working in conjunction with the light, basically all you have to do is change the size and change its uh, how close it is to the light or the size of the light. So for example, if we make it this big, you'll see that it's still not a very sharp image, but if we reduce the size of our light, um, the shadows become sharper, and this is just the way that lights work physically, is that um, the shadows become sharper, the smaller your uh, light source is. Um, and you may need to normalize intensity if you want to retain the same light value, um, depending regardless of the size. So if I size that up again, obviously the light's gonna stay the same value, um, or you might just need to increase your intensity multiplier and then that way you can see that you're getting a sharper shadow. If we jump back into the Hypershade Editor, uh, one other thing that I'll show you really quickly is with the, um, with the image, if you're finding that you're going to want more um, repetitions of that uh, image, of that blocker, you can, you can select the Place 2D Texture node and then you can repeat UVs. Um, you can just double it, say, to um, 2 and 2. So U and V are going to be increased uh, uh, by 1. Uh, and then you can see that there are more leaves on that. And I'll show you actually with the image there in the background. So I'm just going to increase this to four by four. So you get a lot of repetitions there. So that's a real quick way to be able to adjust that. And then if I run that IPR again, you'll see that you get all those repetitions. And then we can move our light further back. So we're getting more of that light blocker being affected and you get something like that. So this is really useful for creating something like a forest floor, obviously. This is probably, a, you're starting to see the pattern a little bit too much. So um, if you're using a seamless um, seamless alpha, that might be a good way to do it. Uh, otherwise, this sort of works well. Um, now I'll quickly open up my um, the scene that I showed at the start and just show you quickly how I did that. Okay, so here we are in the scene. Um, you can see that there's already some geometry and things in in there. Um, I actually just grabbed this geometry from Quixel Mega Scans. I'll leave a link in the description so you can try out some of this stuff yourself. It's pretty cool um, if you're looking for some nicely detailed realism. Um, but you'll see that I've got in this scene, I've got a dome light with this HDRI image on it. And then I've also got um, this uh, directional light. So the way this directional light is working, if I run the render, so this directional light, it's not it doesn't care where the light blockers are because it's coming from basically the from outside of the scene from that direction. So it doesn't matter, matter where this light node is. Um, all it cares about is the direction. So if I change that direction to the right, it's just going to change it to the right. Um, so you'll see that the node is actually in front of the light blockers here in the background. And what I've done is I've got that leaf texture, um, which you can't see in the camera, obviously. And then on the other side, if I just hide this momentarily, I've got this uh, stripey texture, which is for the um, trees in the background that you can see there. So that's what's casting the primary um, shape of the shadow, which you can see on the ground here. Um, and then I've just combined the leaves for that to create a little bit more um, randomness across the shadow. And I've increased the um, the U and V uh, repeats on both of those, um, except for the uh, one in the back, which was the trees. I just create uh, increase the U repeats, so it's just uh, increased the amount of repeats uh, horizontally, not vertically. So that's worth keeping in mind as well. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all there is to that though. It's this very simple technique that you can use uh, to create some pretty nice lighting effects. Um, so yeah, um, and you can see that that's pretty much what I've done there. 
and um, if I actually turn it to raw that's what it actually looks like in the final render so yeah hopefully that tutorial has helped you if it has let me know in the comments um, and also make sure you click that like button so other people can find it if they're searching for such a thing uh, if you enjoy the tutorial however you should also consider subscribing because I'm doing two tutorials a week at the moment and um, if you're into CG stuff you'll want to be looking out for those otherwise that's it for now thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.